<laughs> Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek hello, break, hello. talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, anything else that catches our fancy. I'm Ben Stone. That was Joe Bryant. Mm-hmm. And over there, <laughs> with a new time zone, he's got that fresh time zone smell to him. Oh. Can you do a little bit of a time change? Isn't that coming up? <laughs> Next weekend. Next week. You getting ready? <laughs> yes. Have you already changed? Uh, I mean, the shows will be an hour early, so I need to remember that. Oh, come on. But, that, uh, yeah. only had that happen oh. to you, what? Well, that was more than once. Last sometime. year. Every single time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a holiday tradition, and it's getting the, like, five minutes before showtime is like, oops, I'll be right there. Hang on. Give me a minute. <laughs> oh, I need to get dressed. Hold on. <laughs> so that's definitely a thing. What's going on? What's new? Jill, your clock showed up so you know what time it is. Yay! Yes. <laughs> My pine time showed up. And yes, I prefer the uh, analog, analog dial. <laughs> <laughs> Hip, <sir. laughs> I know. <laughs> I need to put more faces uh, you use the uh, the yeah, actual pine faces. time, and then you change the color. It's like there we go. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> no, I'm 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 so happy. I it came from the <laughs> slow boat from China, and then from a slow a, a cargo ship that was stuck in the L.A. harbor, most likely. <laughs> but it's been very fun to play with. I'm looking forward to using it to track my footsteps when I go to Disneyland again this week. Yay! <laughs> you're gonna be doing that that's the thing you're going on going to disneyland yeah. again you didn't get enough of it yeah you're not full <laughs> no it's gonna be once a month for a bit because we bought you know i bought passes for me and my husband and it's our vacation all right. <laughs> and i want to make sure to utilize all that money i spent <laughs> <laughs> pedro do you have anything at all going on because you never had anything and i don't I don't know. Sometimes I, this week I got nothing. It's always a mystery. <laughs> you got cash in your wallet, Pedro. <laughs> I do. Uh, 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 though I got that wallet a while back. It's one of those fake Ridge wallet thingies. It's the stealth wallet. That's that's oh, it. It's yeah. got the little nice. pull tabby thing that you could actually pull to reveal. For our audio listeners, he's holding up a really cheap Raspberry Pi case. <laughs> It's, it's a little too thin for a Raspberry Pi game. <laughs> and it's, got, it's, like it's a as nice RFID. It's thinner than my finger. So there's Settle. that. Wait, hard. You need to get a Pi Zero. <laughs> <laughs> or the, uh, um, what's it called? The Arduino type one, Pi Nano. The Pi Nano. Those are pretty thin too. Yeah. Do you think we can make a Pi Nano phone? Yeah. Yes, if not for nothing else, phone. then for just the uh, <laughs> for the pun. Yep, <laughs> that'd be it. Yeah, man, I've been up to a lot of stuff. I've been accelerating a lot of things yeah. I've had planned uh, just because you know Valve came out and they're like, "Hey, we're making this Steam Deck and we're serious about it this time." So we kind of do a Linux gaming show and um, just some infrastructure stuff. Uh, a couple of things I went ahead and put up. Uh, this is probably a bad idea, but I've been asked a lot. What are the settings for all the equipment here in the mm-hmm. studio? This is the Jack Studio setup. There's nice red text up at the top that says this page only exists <laughs> to show the configs and the computers in the studio, followed by this is not a guided tutorial. Blindly applying things from this page can and will break your system. So I look forward to people ignoring that and the emails for all the uh, settings saying, ah, my system's breaking. <laughs> like, cool story, bro. And um, that's all you're going to get from me. <laughs> <laughs> again and i don't put stuff up like that for reasons but there you go it's up uh, have fun with it also for my brothers and sisters out there that want to practice their mixing i try at least once a month to get things updated if you're unaware we have a archive.org page with linux gamecast stuff and i went ahead and dropped mm-hmm. linux gamecast 478 multi-track export it's a dry mix it's the raw audio coming in from last week's show which YouTube took 76 hours, no, it's 27 hours, yes, uh, to do. It's released uh, non-commercial, no derivatives. Uh, go ahead, play with it if you've ever wanted to see what it was like to mix an audio show. This is this is the good stuff. This is not the stuff. If you want to get into the business of editing podcasts, and stuff, this is not the things that people will give you. They will give you like this horrific mixed-down stereo with an air conditioner running in the back. But if you want to play with your mm-hmm. levels, 
you know, the three of us, that would be myself, Jordan, and Pedro coming in. You can do the EQ, you can do all that, get your own mix and compare it against the actual episode and be like, hey, mine's better. And that's awesome. It wouldn't take too much. And finally, and finally, one thing that I went ahead and finished, which is Nightmare. Pedro understands this. Um, if you had Google+, Plus. Maybe you had two Google Plus accounts. Maybe you had a YouTube account. Because if you had Google Plus, you had a YouTube account. And if you had a YouTube account, you got a Google Plus account. And further and further and further down that rabbit hole, where I've ended up, I think I have six YouTube accounts now, which I've managed mm-hmm. to merge some of them together. I'm terrified. The fact that our YouTube page works at all is a mystery to me because I was linking accounts blindly until everything linked up to like even the AdSense account. But... I've created a new YouTube page called Linux Teamcast Uncut for live and uncut stuff. It has got all of our game streams. They're going to be going up there along with Linux Teamcast Uncut and this show that you're listening to or watching. If you want to watch it without all of the ads and the intrusions that you might experience from Twitch, it will be up there. Um, basic running just to keep track of it. Reason we're doing this is I ran an experiment last month to appease the almighty YouTube AI. And I said, what, what happens on our main channel if we just put out the produced content? Because I make no illusion. Pedro, will tell you right now, why do we get a month? About 30 bucks? Yeah. If <laughs> probably less than that, yeah. 28 <laughs> something. <laughs> so I don't, I don't want anybody coming at me like, oh, you tried to make money. <laughs> this is nothing to do with money, but it, it's about discoverability back to, I want people to be able to find our content because more than once, I'll search for something that we've done incognito account. And yes, it'll put the laser search like ninth below other stuff that has nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. I want to improve that. I want to improve the discoverability, the visibility of our produced content, like Seamcast Weekly, interfacing Linux, and this show. Again, you know, anything that is going to go through like, you know, the machine, as you will. And I did that last month and shows like this went up, you know, 20% and Linux Gamecast Weekly has jumped with a mixture of everything from like 200. Not many people has ever really watched our videos. We've always been audio podcast, but now it's averaging 400 and that's trending upwards. So we're going to be putting just the unproduced live stream stuff on its own channel. There'll be a Thanks, link. Valve. <laughs> oh, again, this was stuff that's been like, I'll get around. Oh boy, I better get around to doing all that yesterday. Let's, let's just go ahead and get that started. So yeah, there'll be a link uh, probably on the web zone. There'll be a link in the show notes and all that. If you want to just sub to that and watch it uh, as it currently goes with um, our live and uncut series for patrons, you get a podcast version of that and you get it usually the same day, if not the next day. And uh, after that, a week later, it'll go up on the uh, just general channel and you can watch it. So yeah, again, we're not trying to nickel and dime anybody. Yeah. Nice. Housekeeping. Well, Jill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, oh boy. So on to the news. So Ubuntu 21.10 Impish Injury has been released with lots of major updates for the Ubuntu ecosystem. Hooray. And this one by default now includes GNOME, GNOME 40 as the default desktop environment. And no worries, the Ubuntu dock is still there, but it actually has been redesigned I'm just to at this incorporate. Image and I'm thinking, man, you need to refill the HDR container when you get done with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that lightning bolt <laughs> going to the laptop. So, yeah, so the Ubuntu dock is still there. And so the dock now includes a divider between running and pinned apps and now has a trash can. Um, applet and the trash can is not on the desktop anymore and the yaru light theme is now default hiss hiss yeah hiss. <laughs> hiss. we wanted Why that dark theme that? but <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and now ubuntu has the linux 5.13 kernel of of which ven commented would have been nice to see. 5.14 would have made a lot more sense um, (laughs) considering all the work that's been done in the back end for audio latency correction, especially with the USB audio interfaces. But 
Hey, what are you going to do? And that just kind of leads me into thinking, where exactly does the Ubuntu desktop sit in 2021, rolling into 2022? Because we're thinking about it like this. The kids are running Arch. Old timers like mm-hmm. myself, we're running Debian or Fedorf. We're doing that. The new kids, um, you know, not you know, don't want to call them newbies, but people are like, I want to try this out, but I need a comfortable experience. You know, I need something I can use while I'm learning. They're heading over to Pomp OS and masochists run spins of main distributions that may or may not exist next year. Which what what, what do you want again, Pedro? KD and Neon? That one. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> you know, developed by Jonathan Rydell, the, one of the, if not the head developer of KDE, but yeah, go on. <laughs> what happened to Fundunto? <laughs> uh? I'm not actively involved with the development of KDE Neon, so... <laughs> Excuse me, Pedro, I think maybe your powers have grown over the years. <laughs> I did kill Crunchbang inadvertently, but uh, there's buns in labs now. That one works. I'm just thinking like that. But, you know, <laughs> currently I think of Ubuntu kind of like is like the vanilla middle default thing, but not, not necessarily I would recommend for any particular use case. And if somebody says, hey, I'm running Ubuntu, I'm like, all right, that's fine. I wouldn't try to convince them to change to something else, but in the same end, I wouldn't come to them and say, hey, getting into Linux, try Ubuntu. I just want to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, you know, I, I, I'm genuinely curious. As Joe brought up, you know, Firefox this is going to be the edition where Snap is a thing. Firefox comes snapped, and I, I want to see how that trickles down. Because uh, if you're unfamiliar with like yeah. the story in this studio, I used to run everything on Ubuntu, and here I absolutely did. And uh, I, I still remember the day because we were talking in our Discord. I'm like, "What's wrong with GNOME System Monitor? Why is Calculator taking ten seconds to open up?" Oh, they've been replaced by Snaps. I wasn't informed of that. Hmm. <laughs> then yeah. you go and you do the find out. Like, how do I find out what's installed as a snap? Why is it? How do I get rid of the snaps? And um, you know that caused me to insert any amount of time, figure out what was going on, why things were uh, being being different, and for what reason, what was the logic behind it. Firefox mm-hmm. is going to be that line for some other people. It absolutely yeah. is, and that's that was the day I said, you know what, I'm just going to run Debian. Um, don't have time to mess with it. So, Pedro, where do you see Ubuntu sitting in our 2022 world? The default <laughs> spin? I Honestly, I don't get it. Because... Not well, enough it's, it's running by default GNOME. for you? Yeah. <laughs> honestly, it's running GNOME and has, has been established time and time again. You can't run GNOME without running the third-party extensions that GNOME very much doesn't want you to run. They've gone out of their way with every new version. They deliberately, well, probably not deliberate, but all of the extensions, at least the most common ones, seem to break. So then the developers need to fix that to account for the new version of GNOME. And Ubuntu, out of the box, is using three of them, at least. So, really? That's so, the so default you're experience you're Ubuntu putting yourself through? Ubuntu is going to face the same problems as Fedora, right? <laughs> Uh, but Fedora. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, so the same problems as Pop OS, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fedora just kind of went Pop with the is... vanilla GNOME experience. Yeah. They're possibly one of, if not the only major distro that actually does that, because every other distro has uh, at least two extensions. Uh, so yeah, it's. I'm trying 2110, but it's Shubuntu, the XFC spin, not the um, default one. It's on the laptop right here. The Dell 5495. I'm going to be taking this one to Portugal, and if uh, until that time Shubuntu behaves, that will be the one that I run while uh, it's there. I suspect it will be fine, but you never know. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and throw it. I mean, I, I will definitely listen to Jordan. When Jordan comes back and he says, you know what? Uh, no, I'm perfectly serviceable on a single monitor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very true. How about it, it's you, made Jill? for laptops. <laughs> yeah. Since you're not, you, you weren't just patiently <laughs> waiting. You're like, when can I take a swipe at Gnome in three, two, one? Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you have a well, laptop. I'm using a Ubuntu with- <laughs> Mate right now. <laughs> so. <laughs> so what do you think, Jill? <laughs> Jill? Yeah, well, 
I actually do like um I I like gnome. I think it has has improved and it has its use case, but it's not necessarily the one I like to use. What, but it's okay if other people use it. Well, gnome aside, <laughs> what about just Ubuntu in general? Because that's oh, the oh, question. Um Okay. Okay. So yeah, I love Ubuntu. Um, I prefer the, uh, to run LTS. And so I'm looking for the next LTS uh, release, which is going to be 22.04. It's it's stable and it's great for my broadcasting rig and I'll, I'll probably stay on it. Although I also have um, uh, set up a Fedora 34 box for broadcasting as well for the future. <laughs> but I actually... I, I think Ubuntu is still a great choice for a new user to come over to Linux. So I think at this point, yeah, Pop fine. really takes the cake on that one. It does. Uh, yeah, no, but <laughs> again, you know, uh, Pop OS is, is, has the modified uh, Gnome experience and the modified Ubuntu experience, but it's still Ubuntu at the base, which is still Debian at the base. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, agreed. <laughs> and that's why but, I'm with Debian, because all that's like body kits you know when you see that poor yeah. car with like stuck on fenders and stuff i'm like well, why, why why'd you do that to my boy get all that nonsense off and let's use the debian yeah but hey each to their own and yes my brothers and sisters out there running Susie, we understand you wanted to be included but we also know that you're trying to get your wi-fi and video drivers up and running right now instead of watching the show so <laughs> Good well, also that. Ubuntu 21.10, um, <laughs> they have also included uh, uh, Wayland support for users using NVIDIA drivers, which is really Good great. Good so NVIDIA is never going to release a Wayland driver, Jill. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we sit back and we've been waiting for a Wayland driver from NVIDIA for so long, and they're just like, no, I'm not going to do it. We're NVIDIA, and we're like, is this really you talking, Jensen, or is it the jacket? I think it's the jacket at this point. And I'm being, I'm being a little facetious because well, guess what we got coming. right yeah. here is a Wayland-powered <laughs> display driver for NVIDIA. That's right. Yeah. You can play around with it. <laughs> It is a beta driver. So now my first thing with this, I saw that we got the uh, experiments installed it. I'm like, okay, what what can I do? Can I do all the fun stuff? I'm not that brave. What I found out I could do was install Weston and I launched a terminal inside of Weston while it was writing mm -hmm. X and I moved the terminal around. It was everything I imagined it would be. Um, mm. Outside of that, there's also a mechanism in this beta driver to play around with a resizable bar support, which can drastically we're talking like 10 20 percent improvement with uh some dx12 using um what is it vkd3d VKD VKD yes we we need to call all of this now just like james because <laughs> it should just all be incorporated into the xvk but probably vkd3d has some incompatibilities with the xvk so they can't merge them when yeah, they just like threw it under like we need to come up with like a general name for it because you know we had like d9 vk d3 oh. d what let's call it proton no <laughs> yeah how about we can we call it wine <laughs> but wine doesn't have dxvk or we're VK working on it shut up <laughs> we're, we're making our own dxvk <laughs> They're trying to do it the right way. Kudos to them. Mm. Major, major kudos to them. But, um, yeah. <laughs> also that. But, I mean, it does work. I wasn't brave enough to um, try launching just straight Wayland because I looked at the uh, line of depths and the only thing I have, uh, I'm like, well, no, I got an NVIDIA card in Jackbox, but the only NVIDIA card that I have in any of these boxes with that that's not headless is... Red Booper, and I looked at the dependency chain of getting all that set up. I'm like, nope, not doing that on a production box. But Pedro, you should play with it. Jill, you should play with it. You should have Wayland yeah. for days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have been playing with it. And I think this is great because it's going to bring break greater compatibility to Fedora 34 and uh, the, the new Ubuntu. So. Yay. Yeah, the the thing Wayland that, the you future. know, <laughs> me being me, what I appreciate the most about this particular driver is that AMD finally caved and decided to support GBM um, rendering for Weston and Wayland. 
Um, but they're doing it via the EGL system that they had in place before. <laughs> okay, to save everyone the email, Pedro just said AMD finally caved. <laughs> Nvidia. There we go. See, look, I saved you the comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no nvidia finally caved and they for the longest time they were pushing for egl streams egl streams is the way mm-hmm. to do it egl streams this and that yeah. because the chronos group this and that's like um everyone else is doing gbm so well here we are <laughs> well you gotta look back at when we were talking about this uh way back when we were also looking at mirror Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I mean, I'm pretty sure all this stuff is baked. This is, this is just this is just good old fashioned Nvidia spite at this point. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's done. But wait a little longer. We wanted to do it this other way, but it is there. Go play with it and uh, send them to me. Send me some emails. Send me some feedback. Let me a comment. Let me know how it's working for you because then you get to play around with pipe wire and everything else. And if you want all this hotness out of the box, minus the beta driver, um, Fedora is the way to go play with that. So. Yes. Yeah. Wayland and pipe wire. <laughs> mm. So the absolutely beautiful internet's <laughs> been a buzz. It's been a blaze. People talking about the DYI laptop from Framework. We've all looked at it. You know, Louis Rosman's talked about it. Linus mm-hmm. has talked. I think Linus has put some money into the project. Not this Linus. The other one, the squeaky one. Um, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> We're all very excited. I think Lewis is very excited about it for some reason. I'm like, repairability. Yes, you can mix and match and everything was going to go together like that. 100%. And, and then we got to the price. <laughs> wow. Um, understandable, but still, wow, that's expensive. There might be a way to kind of get a starter edition. Just just the beginning bits for like the Build-A-Bear of laptops and i'm talking about the framework laptop diy edition starting at a very affordable very affordable yeah. 749 a price even a pedro could love honestly that's not too bad for what's on offer and if you actually go and spec out the like the base version that you could buy beforehand uh, I think you still can if you can find that in stock. Uh, it costs the same, so good job. Not 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 getting you know not ripping people off on that one. But the interesting bit for me was uh, this DIY version comes bare bones, just a motherboard with the processor. Uh, so you have to supply your own RAM, you have to supply your own Wi-Fi, you have to supply your own storage, uh, and the little modules for the expansion ports. The Wi-Fi card. That's that's the first because most every laptop out there has um, like an approved list of Wi-Fi cards that you can use, and if it's not, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, if it's not <laughs> in the um, if it's not in the approved list, you can't run it because the BIOS just goes, uh, yeah, sorry, no, you can't do that. So I am kind of curious uh, of the YouTubers, like maybe the squeaky, the aforementioned squeaky Linus, uh, if we can get. Uh, just one of them and throw different Wi-Fi cards in there to see what's um, what works and what doesn't because that could make that even more interesting. It's everything that they do around this laptop. It seems okay. No, three by two screen modular everything encouraging people to take it apart and repair it themselves if they can everything sounds great. It so, is pretty decent. I mean, that's going to yeah. get you a, I just walked through it online while Pedro was talking to you. That's going to get you a, you know, not terribly powerful i5, um, 1135G7 and uh, nothing else. Basically you get a screwdriver and I select, you know, no operating system. Yeah. It's going to cost you <laughs> $749. One year limited warranty, 30 day return guarantee, one per order, free shipping. And uh, it does require a hundred dollar deposit. So yeah, but it well, was you can really go going. back later and and buy the modules for Wi Fi again. You and, can stick everything yeah. together. And what I really enjoyed, you know, I that's why I wanted to do it live while we were streaming. Sure, one it, the mm-hmm. price never went up. It didn't. You know, as long as you select no options, no options, no options. Hey, I want exactly yeah. what you tried to sell me right here at step one, <gasps> and I don't have to jump through any hoops. I don't have to make sure I unclick some hidden box. Hi, Dell. Um, 
<laughs> right. Oh, uh, what's that? You don't want that renewable warranty? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and if you want to put windows on it, the price goes up 139 to 199 dollars. Oh, so they're paying for the full the Linux, license. Folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is, uh, you know, 700 bucks is very tempting. You know, especially around this time, hundred dollar deposit. Go. I'm not buying a laptop from anybody, but I'm just saying if you are <laughs> in that market and your face looks like Pedro's just dick, I don't know how you're going to be able to resist. <laughs> it, is, it, it is a very good proposition. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're doing yeah. whatever they're doing. It's working and it's working very well. They have uh, thus far accrued a lot of um, goodwill, good brownie points from the internet. So I'm, I'm going to say yeah. goodwill, especially when you have that case and you know that their focus is modularity. Uh, you're thinking like two years down the road, if this company is going to continue not being evil, you're like, oh, would you just like to buy a new motherboard for your case? Sure. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Done. Oh, you want to upgrade the screen yeah, in a awesome. couple of years? All right. Here's a new screen. Done. It, it's bizarre to even think like that, isn't it? Because yeah. <laughs> my entire adult life, I'm like with everyone else. Like, why can we not standardize on like a laptop form factor? And every manufacturer's had every excuse and they've been pushing out different ones for 30 years. So it's nice to see one company go, hey, let's do it this way. And they've also opened up their own store to let other vendors come in to make modules. Mm -hmm. Good times yeah. had by all. Now, Pedro... The next story, I have seen people very much upset online, sir. Very much upset <laughs> that, that yeah. this is not $99. <laughs> no, no, it is not. It's not $99. And if you heard one, uh, Jill, one Jill Bryant talk about it on another podcast, uh, you may know <laughs> that we're talking about the PinePhone Pro. We couldn't talk about it last week because the embargo had not yet lifted. So uh, here we are. Uh, it is the RK um, 3399S uh, SOC, which is, I don't know, I think at this point it is Pine's favorite uh, SOC because it's on the Pinebook Pro, it's on the Quartz 64, it's on the Rock Chip 64, and now it's on the PinePhone Pro as well. So... There we go. Uh, no more all winner 64 SOC, but of course the brand new specs, they come with a price and that price is three ninety nine, just under the nope line for me. I, I, I don't think it was on purpose, but that was very much like right under the nope line for me. It's like, okay, Look if I like had this, that Pedro. kind of money, no, I, no, no, maybe. No, 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 it's 400. It's $400. <laughs> now, you're not going to Mateus your way yeah. out of this because this was a joint effort. Hundreds of engineering hours went into getting this thing 399 instead of 401. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, 399 <laughs> is probably a very good price for what's on offer here and it should perform Absolutely. very well if, you know, the software peeps uh, throw in some extra love uh, to ensure that the operating systems and all the apps work as they should. So I, I look forward to it. It's very, it's very much an audio listen. jack. And you got to think about it, though. I mean, 120 gigabytes of storage, 4 gigs of RAM, 13 megapixel camera, hex core CPU, 3000 milliamp battery, 1440 by 726 inch display. You put that in a tablet and I'll buy one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a new Pine so, Pad Pro. <laughs> the other cool thing that I found out is that the Pine Phone Pro is two millimeters thicker than the Pine Phone. And this is because Pine 64, the makers of the Pine Phone, cares more about the community being able to open it up and, and hack it and replace parts as opposed to how it looks in compactness, like what Apple does. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and, and the raised bevel is also why it is a bit thicker. So you won't scratch the screen when you lay it flat. And yeah, as uh, Ven and Pedro were saying, this is a great price point, $399. That's less than half the price of some flagship phones priced at $800 to $1,000. <laughs> so, you know, and I really think this could be a game changer when the software gets more refined, this is the Linux phone, you know, you'll be able to share with your family and friends. And that's coming. Yay. <laughs> and it is very much a mid-ranged phone. And it, it is priced, unfortunately, with the current day mid-ranged phones. 
So I, I still think it's pretty decent. I mean, <laughs> you know, yesterday Google's like, hey, you want you want the Google's mid rank? Got 700 bucks? Yeah. <laughs> For a low end one? You're like, why? Why is 700 low end? He's like, have you seen what Apple's charging? 700, please. Mm-hmm. Give me. <laughs> but I, there is definitely something uh, I was talking about this in the pre show is, you know, we've definitely like the Pine Fund. What was the Pine Fund? Like 99 bucks, $129, something like that. Yeah, it, it was uh, it was 150, 140, 150. Yeah. Okay, that, yeah, it was in the end to buy. Hey, I'm going to apply, uh, you know, just buy this to take it home. I'm not going to use this. Fine, it's my tinker device. I'm going to like build some software on it, play 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 the home Linux game, and maybe help with some development. Buggers like this is still kind of that, but you can do it a lot faster. So mm-hmm. just keep that in mind. I mean, the ecosystem development is still very much underway. You know, yeah. I I just want to make sure that anybody. Because yes, there is a difference between one hundred and forty nine dollars and three ninety nine. You know, fortunately, I think a lot of us are at a point in our life. You know, we've all not been, but those of us who are one hundred and forty nine dollars, like, yeah, sure, whatever. I mean, you lose that, and you're like, oh, you're going to be grumpy for minutes. But three hundred, four hundred bucks, like, oh man, um, we got problems. Something's wrong with it. Just keep in mind what it is, you know. And they're not trying to oversell it to you. Like, hey. You know, yeah. out they specifically this. say it's like the software is not really there yet. And it's you, only yeah. as good as the it's software stack behind it. And <laughs> this is pine. Keep in mind, three ninety nine for what they're delivering from a boutique manufacturer is incredible. Okay, it just yeah, is, especially absolutely. in the phone it's form wonderful. factor, because <laughs> this is yeah. If you look at the guts, it's basically a Pinebook Pro in a phone form factor. So they cut the size on that significantly. Uh, very good very, very good <laughs> so in this next thing we're going to be talking about reverse tethering and the reason I, I, I ran across this project and while I couldn't pinpoint that particular time I knew this would have come in handy because I know I've been in this situation mm-hmm. where I did not have Wi-Fi on my mobile device but like most of you at home I didn't have a way to stick an ether noodle in it yeah <laughs> yeah then those uh, USB adapters, not, they're not always available. <laughs> At least when you open the drawer, it's like, I knew it was there. Oh, dang. What now? <laughs> but yeah, this will very much help you work around that. And what it, it's, it's, first of all, it's got a clever name. It's called uh, Ignirathet. And if you're wondering what that is, there's actually an explanation at the bottom of the GitHub page. It's uh, tethering in reverse. So in reverse. very clever, very, very <laughs> clever. Uh, very good and yeah it is uh, built in uh, Java and Rust and what it does is it allows your computer via ADB to share your internet connection so you're effectively tethering your phone via your computer instead of the other way around like everyone does when they can't find the Wi-Fi it's like okay let's just turn on the uh, tethering share it to the laptop and away we go this does the opposite if you're building, say, your own Android device or your own Android-based OS, this will help you debug any device issues if for some reason you're not getting access to the Wi-Fi's. Okay, so if I share the connection, does this work? Okay, so the issue lies with the Wi-Fi's or with the 3G module or whatever. It's made by the um, the Jenny Motion people. So, very good job. Mm-hmm. That, that, that was very, very interesting. I thought it was quite, it definitely falls in the handy to know about, very, very handy to know about on the off chance that you ever, ever need it. But yeah, and I think we all have at one time and I'm, I'm trying to remember when I, I, I needed it, but I, I do remember a time when I could have used it. It's like, this. oh yeah, the, the Wi-Fi module on your phone is broken and you don't have a yeah. SIM. It's like, okay, I need an internet connection on this for things. Oh, I get an easier one for you. Or your Pedro. Wi-Fi goes down. Or you're in Vin's house and you're like, what's Wi-Fi passport? Oh, well, that's a There we go. <laughs> do, do you got 20 minutes? Because we're going to have a fun time because most of this is upper lowercase and special characters. <laughs> Where's the WPS and, uh, button? And you know what? <laughs> yeah. If I'm remembering, a lot of routers, the Wi-Fi usually dies first before the Ethernet dies. So that's a good use case. Now I'm kind of remembering that was when I needed it. <laughs> And the other cool thing is that even the developer actually says to use the Rust uh, 
Rust version of the program because it takes up less resources than the Java well, one. Well, I so. mean, I it is help. Android, so Java is to be expected. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ADB, all the things. So, Joe, you're about to tell everyone at home that Apple uh-huh. is going to replace all the buttons on Blender with a single button that you just click and you keep clicking it until it's done making the thing you want. Right? No, if anything, <laughs> Blender's going to get even more complex and more buttons will be made. Have you used an Apple product? So, <laughs> well apple won't influence the user interface fortunately <laughs> so this is huge news for my favorite open source 3d creation software blender apple has joined the blender development fund as a patron member to support continued core development for blender Woohoo! and i had actually heard a rumor of this coming so i i was kind of waiting and but as we know, Apple wants a piece of the pie, especially now that Blender runs on the M1 and it'll run on the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. So, you know, they they want a piece of that pie because Blender is, you know, taking the 3D world by storm. And um, Apple will also provide engineering expertise and additional resources to the Blender headquarters and development community. So this is a very, very good thing. And it's so nice to see all these big companies coming on bo- board to help Blender because they're, they're seeing that open source is, is really taking over the entertainment industry. So it's really wonderful. Pedro Mateus. <laughs> I, I, I completely uh, tangential to the story, but I'm looking at the name of the press contact person that Apple put in charge of the Blender bits. Yeah, Alex and Bender Rodriguez. Like Apple? No, it's uh, Apple. Blender, and the name of the person is Alex Bender. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. someone was being clever, weren't they? It's like, oh, we should yeah. put Alex in charge of the Blender thing. It's like, eh, 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 eh. Yeah. I think it's pretty interesting. Um, you know, it's going to be same as normal, and Apple wants to make sure because Apple's spreading that money around. Uh, yeah. I guarantee you, Black Magic did not uh, have a version of DaVinci Resolve ready on day one, just out of goodwill. For the <laughs> no. No. yeah no. so it's good to see that and uh, i personally find the m1 their their take on arm extremely fascinating you know just yeah the possibilities great. with you know the, the memory bandwidth and that alone now again we'd all wish it wasn't apple who made disposable throwaway things that end up in landfills but you know you take the money where you can get it. Speaking of money where you can get it, if you want to send us some, you can do that by becoming a Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's how we finance everything. We pay the bills, we put the bandwidth up, and we don't put it on like some weird, uh, like shady site mm-hmm. that may or may not collect your data information. No, sir, we host it. Nice. YouTube? YouTube? No, I'm talking about the podcast. <laughs> Pedro, how old are you, Pedro Mateus? Uh, 35? Aww, okay. He's still in his 30s. At 35? <laughs> you're old enough to know that podcasts don't show up on YouTubes. <laughs> you tell me this. Video podcasts. Wait, how long too? have I been doing this? Eight years, almost nine? Uh, yeah, you're telling me this now. <laughs> I, well, I'm saying that you're of the age because you ask a 12, 14, 15 teenager, you're like, listen to podcasts? Yeah, on YouTube all day. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> That's where I found Linux Gamecast. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks to each and every one of you helping out with that. And um, yeah, if you can kick us some coin, we'd very much appreciate it. But we like to give back, uh, get early access to the Live and Uncut series and podcast format. We do that. We throw that out there a week early for everyone. We do have some special things that we do like to roll out as well. Access to our Discord, where we're at the other six days a week, and we're all in there. Actually talking, that is our primary form of communication. Even if you just want to show up with some popcorn, it's a good idea. And it's definitely a fun time. Executive producers even get a special video live stream. Speaking of live streams, we have an audio only stream just for our patrons. If you want to pop that in, you want to watch the video, waste the bandwidth. That's a thing we deliver. But stick around. If your names and credits and all that other stuff, we do have a merch store and a bunch of other things. If you'd like to support us, you like what we do, like and subscribe, do the mm-hmm. shares. Head over to linuxemcast.com, hover over support, and look at all those glorious options. But that's going to do it for our shameless (laughs) self-promotion. We need to get into a slice of alphabet pie. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh. 
I guess. Did they take it, yeah. the noodles from the alphabet soup and just stuff no, them Pedro, into a pie Pedro, crust? You, Pedro, you need to take a step <laughs> they, back because they cut you the apples just watched in real numbers. time someone go, oh, followed by, I didn't say I wouldn't <laughs> eat it. <laughs> I think it's just I apples mean, cut into numbers. Yeah. <laughs> if like Jill is saying it is apple, okay. Apple pie, very clever. Apple pie, right, fine. <laughs> I don't know. Man. Just put it in a blender, man. Uh, 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 a blender bender? <laughs> but then again, <laughs> maybe the apple bought the blender, but yeah. <laughs> the eye blend? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you make jokes like that, but they just released a twenty dollar eye cloth. Okay. Oh, they did. They did. FX they boy did. made a good joke. A blender bender render bender. <laughs> For our last story. <laughs> Supply chain shortages. This is no laughing matter, but we do need to talk about it. And this is directly from Raspberry Pi because welcome to the brave new oh, world. Twentieth oh. off. Oh. Uber. So this is nice and fresh. There's some bad news. Pi 4, 2 gigs are uh, going to be returning to the $45 price point. This is only temporary. Hopefully 40 nanometer silicon will be allocated to the Compute Module 3 and the Raspberry Pi 3B. So if you're looking to get a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, what do you do, Pedro? <laughs> well, basically <laughs> now all you do is you get the um, compute module because if you want the 3B plus in the usual Pi form factor, the standard one, you, you're just going to you're going to want a four because it's better. So, yeah, this go with the four. And if you really, for some reason, you really want that 3B plus SOC, you get the compute module and you also help. um the pie people sell so, the uh, the baseboards. <laughs> what, what if my company yeah. spent about $100,000 in Q&A and engineering testing for that uh, particular version of the pie, and we need more of them? Compute modules. <laughs> we, can't, we can't certify that. This is medical. Um, you can. Well, um, they will tough. have the option of the Pi 4 and they're with the one gigabyte uh, of memory, and they're actually bringing that back into production, and that'll be uh, uh, yes, the classic the Raspberry Pi price. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'll be the lower Raspberry Pi Pi price. Oh, look, it's a 3A plus with one gigabyte of RAM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, I, considering like all the supply chain disruption, <laughs> like the, you look at this and you're like, okay. Yeah, it's fine. Not, a, not a big deal. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and also, this is Raspberry Pi. This is a company that's taught everyone, hey, we got a new thing. You're like, awesome. I look forward to buying it next year when it's in stock. Yeah. Yeah. When you actually can. Yeah, yeah. We, we've, we've been dealing with scalping pricing on Raspberry Pi for a decade, man. I mean, this is, <laughs> yeah, it prepared us for our modern times. So if you would like to write in and tell us about your uh, pie scalping adventures, I would want to do that, Pedro. Oh, we're not doing the Lego pie? Oh, we got Lego pie up next? <laughs> yeah, we have one yes. more to go. <laughs> There's a Lego pie. It's very important. Uh, it's, it's actually very nice. It's a more open variant of the old Lego Mindstorms, if you remember that. The um, it Basically, it's a hat that comes with the Mindstorm connector that I you am, could use for the motors. Well, I am not for the putting sensors. that on my head. I don't care. No, not happening. <laughs> I don't care what the kids are into. I'm not putting that on my head. Nay. And yeah, the, this very much goes along with what people already do. It's, what do people do? They get a Raspberry Pi and they found some Legos that they have lying around from however many years ago. Or if you're a huge man child, hi, me. Is this uh, thing the, like a Kira? <laughs> can you just like throw it in that room and it'll... <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, you can just keep adding to it. It's a more manual version of Akira. Uh, but it is, yeah, it's just a complement to that. You can drive the motors, and those motors, they were saying that the uh, the motor for the Mindstorms, uh, that the Mindstorm stuff use, are 7.5 volts. So it comes with its own power supply because you're going to need a bit more voltage to drive those motors. So there's <laughs> that. Uh, but it is, it's a great idea. It's Oh, all of a sudden, your Raspberry Pi can drive the Mindstorm. Yes! Yes. Finally! <laughs> Why wasn't this a thing before? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and yeah, Pedro, it makes total sense. And this partnership with Lego Education is actually going to be huge. And it's going to yep. lead, lead to even more development of the Raspberry Pi. And that's that's hoping that our supply chain shortage, shortage does allow this. <laughs> but <laughs> it is coming, yes. <laughs> Whatever. But it's an awesome opportunity. I, I'm still not wearing <laughs> that on my head. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> so many kids are, you know, playing with but, Lego Mindstorms. So this is perfect. You can't cut yourself on Legos. Where's the learning experience in that? <laughs> well, you, you can still injure, well, hurt yourself. Yeah. Injure probably not, but yeah, if you it will hurt. Yeah, if you step on a Lego, Vin, that'll hurt. <laughs> Joe Brian, if I step on a Lego, it shatters. <laughs> <laughs> Not likely. <laughs> Out of fear. <laughs> terror. <Yeah. laughs> See, what Ven didn't tell you is that he dipped them in um, <laughs> liquid nitrogen, d- dropped them on the floor, then stabbed on it. <laughs> You've never broken Legos by stepping yeah. on them? <laughs> uh, yes, after I was already grown up and I weighed 90 kilos. Oh, I didn't know this uh, scenario required a time machine. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> yeah, they don't did. <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, as it turns out i uh weigh a little bit more than i look now, but yes <laughs> if you would like to tell us about your time machine how can one do that pedro Mateus? <laughs> ah yes it's important that your time machine be running linux because if it isn't well then it's probably waiting for windows updates and then you're not going anywhere but if you'd like to get in touch with us you can go to linuxcapecast.com you hit the contact button and you fill out the form there's just a form there. Uh, there's some caveats that you, you may want to read. I had to, just, update, I had to update our form. I did. Oh, I did because oh. Linux, this <laughs> Linux gaming thing starting to take <laughs> off again. So I, I just feel like this. I feel like, you know what? Don't contact us asking us if we would like the opportunity to review or stream your game. Okay. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's skip the middleman. I'm not going to write you back. We're just going to go in the bin, but <laughs> everything else is. Yeah. No. Up. If you'd like us to have a look at your game, send us three keys. Three keys. No, Pedro. That's all we ask no, for. Listen, I want to establish a relationship. <laughs> With us? Really? You, we're, we're trying to... Listen, I understand for the like PR marketing department. Yes, we're trying to get rid of your job. We just want the... Yeah. We look forward to your email. We do have one this week. And, yeah, LWDW uh, is the show that you want to send your uh, feedback to. figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> so Earl writes in. Uh, we were talking about RSS feeds. I believe it was last week, wasn't it? That was a thing. So it's like I, I used to be a massive Google Reader user. It was heartbreaking when they closed it down. Uh, and then I then shifted to good old Reader. However, they did something scammy. The account was free at first. Well, I mean, so you were the product at first. Got it. And unless I paid them, I couldn't add new feeds. Ah, right. So you decided not to remain the product. After that, I spun up a digital ocean droplet for like five dollars a month and installed TTR. Is this an ad? <laughs> Are we reading an ad right now? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just taking a oh, pot shot a, at I, Cameron. That's it. <laughs> oh, poor monster Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> and haven't looked back. It's mapped to my rss.earlcameron.gov subdomain. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, digital ocean droplets, all the thing. That's a perfect use case they're, for they're RSS cheap. They're wonderful. You can use them. Just don't expect them to work when you need to light them up for a showtime because then they're down. Like last week. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it, it really does feel weird to be talking about RSS in 2021, current year uh, argument, but it is it is entirely Google's fault on that one because they're the ones that killed Reader and then they're the ones mm-hmm. uh, that reintroduced that kind of functionality to their Android browser. Yeah. <laughs> what? It's a different way to collect data, <laughs> we, we, man. I we mean, need... it's a marketing company. Why are you relying on a marketing company to give you products and hold on to them? What do you think's going to happen yeah. at some point? <laughs> we need to be able to click that follow button on our, our Chrome browser, browsers on the, our computers, not just Android. <laughs> I'm sure someone and will make an sync. extension. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Don't don't let your memory turn to go. Don't rely on RSS feeds. Just visit the sites. 
Learn the domain names. Type them in. They're easy to get to. <laughs> Give the peeps that you enjoy ad revenue. Or if they have a Patreon, do that. No, Pedro, let me tell you about this elaborate system I have in place to prevent supporting anyone. Huh. Are you using the Brave browser? Dude. Because- <laughs> we get that sometimes. We're like, wow, that, that, that's, you know, uh, people who, uh, what do you call them? Um, privacy hobbyists. Like, mm-hmm. that, that's cool. Granted, any alphabet agency or government can watch anything they want, period. But yep. hopefully you enjoy yourself. <sighs> On that bombshell, we got to bounce out of here. <laughs> we want to thank you for joining us live. I'm listening to us after the fact or watching us on our new fancy live and uncut YouTube web zone. But we're going to spool the music and roll some credits. Do I get a credit spot in It's our music. Do I? Yay. There it is. Oh, thank you, Justin. He says, you are all awesome. Thank you. Allegedly. Actually, you know who's awesome? <laughs> me. Every single one of you. Just me. Every single one of you watching yeah. us right now. All of you. Yes. <laughs> Joining us live and the fine, fine folks who can't join us live, but they decided, you know what? Let's let's throw some money at a problem and not fix it. In fact, it's only making it worse, but <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Aw. We love all of you, and thank you, everyone in chat. We have someone new in chat, Spirk Stan. Thank you so much for joining us. And we've got Altimore. We got Linux Ganuru. We got FX Boy Forever. We've got Artharin. We've got Steve Husband. Oh, so many. We got Mir. There's a Sandy and an Artharin, and yeah, there's yeah. Y'all, are you? Are you, are you two done? <laughs> I like to sing your reading. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Next week we're doing arithmetic. Maybe some abstract algebra. <laughs> okay. I was I was promised there Ooh, would be I no love maths. Abstract algebra. I promised no such thing. Calculus it is then. <laughs> I was promised there would be no maths. That, no. <laughs> Theoretical physics. Oh, I want to do finite math then. I want to analyze uh, the binary system. Oh, that's fine. Wow. Okay, we're going to start with the square root of minus one. Oh wait, no, that's imaginary. And I want to do flow charts again. I okay. haven't done a flow chart in I'll ages. Break out an abacus. <laughs> Bye everyone.